Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here again with another video. Today, going to be giving you an update on a story we've been covering in the channel, a horrible story about uh, a swatting incident that led to the death of 28-year-old Andrew Finch, who was shot dead in Wichita after police responded to a fake call saying there was an ongoing hostage situation at the property. Uh, just in case you missed all of that, what happened was uh, a call was made. Andrew opened up his door. He was confused by what was happening. Obviously, he was nothing to do with any of it. And the attending officers opened fire and used lethal force after suspecting he was reaching for a firearm. And as would later be revealed in videos shown in court, he was just trying to pull up his pants. There wasn't a standoff. Uh, the time from opening the door to lethal force being deployed was just 10 seconds and the officer who shot Andrew Finch was cleared of any wrongdoing. Now, this tragedy occurred after a Call of Duty player wanted to swat another player who had trash-talked him and beat him in a 1v1 wager matchup, and that person gave the incorrect address to Tyler Barris, who was notorious for such behavior going back as far as 2015. The wager was for the princely sum of a dollar fifty and incredibly as well uh the player who called upon barris to do the swatting which just wasn't charged with a crime um anyway upon tyler barris's arrest when he turned himself over to police it was clear that he wasn't just a danger to society that he also had very little remorse about his crimes. Uh, actually, before he turned himself in, he took the time to contact the popular YouTuber Keemstar and arrange an interview, and he just expressed little sympathy with what had happened and didn't seem to grasp exactly the gravity of what he had done. Uh, one quote from the interview was, I don't think that I should not do jail time, but I don't think I should do life or get charged with murder, that's all. I'm not saying that I'm saying I shouldn't do any time at all, though, because admittedly, yeah, I was involved. So if I get caught and charged, then so be it, and I'll do whatever time they give me. I'll serve whatever sentence, because it is what it is. Upon his arrest, it was revealed that Barris had already been charged with making bomb threats to local TV stations in 2015. For this, he was sentenced to two years in prison, but was released early after just eight months served. He'd also threatened to kill his own grandmother, who he was living with at the time, and he was so abusive... In the end, she had to take a restraining order out against him, and that restraining order was later dropped after she was too scared to attend a court appointment. So, if any proof that this person is a genuine danger to society uh, was needed, well, what comes next is almost unbelievable, even within the context of this story. So, while in jail for the swatting incident that killed Andrew Finch, he somehow gained access to Twitter and threatened to swat someone again. We did a video about that on the channel. I'm still aghast that that was able to happen and that he was stupid enough, malicious enough uh, to do that. Who would want to be his legal counsel? So a story with a central character as vile as this and with such a tragedy attached to it can never have a happy ending, but it looks like justice will be served this time around. First, law enforcement has started to recognize the deficiencies not only in education for officers when it comes to dealing with swatting, how to spot swatting incidents, but also they're acknowledging that there is a lack of real punishment associated with it, uh, especially in instances like this where it leads to a fatality. So the tragedy saw Kansas pass a swatting bill that now means anyone in Kansas who engages in such activity and it leads to a fatality would now face between 10 and 41 years in prison. 
The follow-on from that was a bill being introduced to Congress that proposes similar tough measurements, uh, an amendment to the Communications Act of 1934, which is what is primarily used to throw whatever lesser punishments they can at people that engage in malicious activities such as bomb scares and swatting. And it's currently sitting with the House Judiciary Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, Homeland Security and Investigations, awaiting any amendments. That was in July, uh, while... The gears of politics and passing bills and everything else do have a tendency to grind slow. I think this one's going to be pushed through pretty quickly um, by contrast to other bills. I think most crucially of all, it doesn't look like Barris will evade justice any longer. Federal prosecutors have thoroughly investigated his past activities going back to as far as 2015, which is when they suspect he might have begun this activity, and they found that he's also allegedly responsible for bomb threats to schools in Ohio, New Hampshire, Nevada, Massachusetts, and Illinois. All of this supposedly for the purposes of getting friends he met through Halo out of class. In addition, there are also allegations of impersonating an ISIS member and calling in another bomb scare on a local TV station in 2017. So in total, there are 46 new charges that are being leveled at him in addition to the charges he faces from the Andrew Finch incident and the activities he engaged in while in prison. I'll put a link to the full list of charges uh, below in the description. So, it's highly unlikely that barring some incredible legal trickery from his defense team, uh, that Barris will not be facing a sizable prison sentence, especially with his prior incarceration history. Uh, the only truly worrying thing is now, with all of these charges being brought forward, how is he able to get away with it repeatedly for so long? A lot of questions, but the good news uh, is that this person is most likely going to be in prison for a long, long time where hopefully he can't hurt anybody else. I'll see you on the next video.